distance. And so if I think about a circle, this distance, this distance, this distance, this distance, all these distances are the same. And if I imagine all the points, the infinity of points, that are all the same distance from that given center, then that's our definition of circle. Okay? All the points two-dimensional. Good call. All the points that are a given distance, equidistant from the center. We call that distance the radius. Okay? So I want to think about how we can talk about this shape in our class. Here's an ordered pair, any old ordered pair. Here's our center. So how do I write the equation of a circle? I don't want to write the equation of that radius line. I'm tempted to because I see a linear equation with two points on it. And so I think, well, maybe I should write the equation of a line. But I don't want the equation of the line because a line isn't this circle. I've just randomly drawn this point here. I could have drawn it over here, over here, over here. I need some sort of an equation that will make a circle for me. Any thoughts? Tough Monday morning question. Maybe even tougher than re remembering if you remember completing the square. Here, let if I add a little bit to this picture. What's the x value here going to be called? Will it be called h or will it be called x? Is the x value at this point the same as the x value at this ordered pair or the same as the x value of this ordered pair? Kayla? Couldn't hear you. Not sure. OK. Jeff? Lindsay? Yeah, these are lined up on top of each other, so they're going to have the same x value. Okay, so I know the x value here is x. What about the y value of this point? Does it have this y value, or does it have this y value? Jeff? The same as which? This one or this one? Will the y value here be y or k? Okay, so... You're saying this is the ordered pair here, right? And I got a problem with that because what you're telling me is there's this point here, like 4, 3. And then you're telling me that right below it, there's this other point called 4, 3. Well, 4, 3 would have to sit on top of 4, 3. So I don't think that's going to work for me. Jayla, what's the y value here? Right, because they're on the same horizontal line. They have the same y value. Okay. All right, so now we know this point. Excellent. Why does this help me write the equation of a circle? Morgan? Okay, Cecilia? Mr. Burkich? Oh, great answer. Full of energy on a Monday morning. I like it. Ms. Kirkhoff. No. Shrug. Danny. Sure. Don't worry. I'll add a little more to the picture. How long is this distance? Look at all the stunned faces. Okay. Lindsay is located at five. Lauren is located at 2. What's the distance? How'd you get that? I have to subtract. But how come it's not negative 3? Distance is positive. Okay. So what if Marissa is 9 and Lindsay is 7? What's the distance? Two. How about over here? Claudio is negative two. 
Antonio is negative 5. What's the distance between them, Anthony? 3. I'm taking the big one. I'm subtracting the smaller one. So how do I find the distance between these two points? What's this distance going to be? Louisa? Sure, but it's only going to have letters in it, so I may not recognize its positive quality. What did she say? Next and H, right. So we're going to say that this distance is X minus H. Okay, nice. What about this distance here? I'm sorry, what was that one? Yes. Y minus K. Y minus K. Fabulous. Okay, and we're looking for that. Now can anyone write the equation of the circle for me? What you got? Oh, so close, Mr. Guskey. Nona, any thoughts? Yes, Morgan. Well, didn't I hear, didn't I hear that in fact the equa the a circle is all the points the same distance, equidistant from a given point? So if I define this in terms of these, then I should be there. Quinona? No? Still no. Yeah? No. All right. How about this? How could the Pythagorean theorem be useful in this conversation? I see a right triangle. Does the Pythagorean theorem help me with relationships involving a right triangle? How, Antonio? What was the Pythagorean theorem again? Thank you for helping him out. Leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. So in our problem, this looks like x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Any questions about that equation? It comes right from the Pythagorean theorem. It's a rewritten version of the distance formula, which also comes from the Pythagorean theorem. Half your homework tonight is about circles. We're going to be working with this formula a bunch in class today. So don't lose that. You just fought really hard to get that. Okay, next. Uh, does 1 over 3 times 4 to the negative 1 equal 3 times 4? Uh, look at the problem again. Look at your answer. And then heads down. Raise your hand if your answer is yes, they are equal. Hands down, heads up. Okay, so someone who said they weren't equal, how come? Why aren't these equal? What is it about this that makes it not equal to that? What can we say about that? Yes. So this does cause something to flip. Why doesn't the three flip? Why doesn't the three flip? Elizabeth? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. 
because it doesn't have a negative exponent. Shannon, is there a way you could make that three flip without putting a specific negative one here? Danny says she could make it flip by doing this. If we had this, green parentheses, then yes, these are equal because both of them will flip up. Both of them will have that negative one exponent. But right now, only one of them has the negative one exponent, so only one of them moves. So the actual answer then here is four thirds. Any questions about that? Okay. Third one, the one that many of you felt was most challenging, as opposed to the first one, which maybe was the most challenging. Who remembers anything about completing the square? Because we have some completing the square today. Plus three, minus two, plus two. Okay, I'm supposed to solve with completing the square. Who remembers anything about completing the square? Emma? No. Angela? No. Sadia? No. Pablo? Nice. Okay. So one of the first two things we have to do before our completing the square magic is isolate the X stuff. Okay? So he says move that three to the other side. Anyone remember the other thing we need to do before we apply our completing the square magic to both sides? Mr. Paps, do you remember? Factor, no, definitely don't factor. It, it will take you down the wrong road. Yes. So the next thing I need to do is I need to turn this into a 1. This is my A value, my A, my B, my C. I need to turn A into 1 with division. So I'm going to divide everything by that number. And when I do, I'm going to have now x squared minus 2x equals negative 3 ninths. Jesus, any questions about that? Okay. All right. Now, our little math magic. We need to add a certain amount to both sides so that on the left-hand side, we have a perfect square trinomial. And the magic amount that we need to add to both sides is b over 2a, no, b over 2 squared to both sides. So here's my B value, negative 2. Negative 2 divided by 2? Good. Thank you, Pablo. So I'm going to have X squared minus 2X, and then I'm going to add negative 1 squared, and that will equal negative, oops, that will equal negative 1 third plus and negative 1 squared, Pablo said, was 1. Okay. Any questions about what I did just then? The why I'm doing it is to make the perfect square trinomial so that now, finally, I can do the factoring on the left-hand side legit. I can't do the factoring gesundheit on the left-hand side until I have a trinomial that I could factor. At the beginning, I didn't have a trinomial I could factor. Okay. How come on this side I wrote it as plus 1, and on this side I wrote negative 1 squared? No? 
Is that that? Yeah, but why didn't I just write plus one here and plus one here? Most students do that. Wait a minute. But did, but negative one squared, negative one times negative one, negative times negative is positive, one times one is one. Isn't that the same as adding one to both sides? Yeah. So why didn't I just write plus one over here? <laughs> It'd be fewer things to write. Yes, sir. Yes, because when I go to factor this trinomial, I'm not going to think about it. I'm just going to write that. This thing, the unsquared thing, comes right here. So if this were positive 2 squared, 4, if this were positive 2 squared, this would say x plus 2. Okay? But over here, I do want to combine these, and I do end up with 2 thirds. So this was the big part about completing the square. I had to isolate the x stuff. I had to divide to get a equal to 1. And then I used my math magic and did b over 2 squared added to both sides. That gave me this thing that I'm able to factor. And on the right, I just added the numbers. Now I'm almost done with my solving. I take the square root of both sides, and I get square root of 2 thirds. Is that correct, Mackenzie? Yeah? What do you think, Christian? He likes your answer, Mackenzie. Why don't I like that answer? Yes, ma'am. Why are there two solutions? What are we forgetting, Claudio? plus and minus. Remember, when you take the square root of both sides of an equation, when you do that, when you take square root of both sides, you have to remember the plus or minus. Okay, so I'll add 1 to both sides, and I'll have x equals 1 plus or minus root 2 over root 3. And if I rationalize, <coughs> I'll get x equals 1 plus or minus root 6 over 3. Great. Any questions about completing the square? Okay. And then the last question, how do I complete that graph so it has y-axis symmetry? Will someone come up and draw theirs? We want y-axis symmetry. Paulina, thank you very much. Spicy. Yeah, or you can uh, take one of those capped markers and draw with that if you'd prefer. Don't uncap it. What kind of symmetry did I want her to do? Y-axis. Okay. Okay, any thoughts? Any comments? You can do that on a test? Don't do that on a test. It's close, but it's not quite right. Do you see what's wrong with it? I'll tell you the ordered pairs are perfect. Jason? Okay. Yeah. Uh, this one's concave up, so its reflection needs to be concave up. Good catch, Danny. And some people want to get on Polina's case because this point is lower than this point. I don't really care because she's labeled the points, so I know. I don't have to guess where they are. She's telling me they have the same y value, even though I didn't draw it that way. But I do need to see the concavity. This is concave down. 
so this is concave down. This is concave up, so this is concave up. Great, there's my y-axis symmetry case. Who's going to draw the x-axis symmetry case? Thank you, Marissa. Can you draw x-axis symmetry? X-axis symmetry. Okay, what do you think? Yeah. I'm sorry, she drew what? Oh, so this was concave up, which meant this was concave down, and this is concave down, so you're saying this shouldn't be concave down. It should be concave up because you're reflecting this quarter circle down, and you want to see that quarter circle, okay? All right, nice. And then finally, we want origin symmetry. Who can draw this graph so that it has origin symmetry? Lauren, thank you. Mm, that's one way to think about it. I don't know that that's the easiest or right way to think about it. Hi, welcome. Gave your seat away to Angela for a few minutes. So, cool. Thanks, Sarah. You've got a whole room of people if you're stuck. Don't take the cap off. Remember, on Friday, we talked about switching the signs on both the X and Y. And that's what Danny's saying. Change both signs. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're skipping over the one zero one, then yes. Uh-huh. Good, and then I agree, negative 2, negative 1. Nice. Now all you need to do is the appropriate concavities. You've got the ordered pairs. What shapes connect those dots? Yes, I agree completely. Yes. And if that one's concave up, what can you tell me about the other one? Right, because in our original shape, they have opposite concavities. One is concave down, the other is concave up, and so I need opposite concavities here as well. She knew that this one going through the origin would make this one, and so this one had to be the opposite of this. Wow, very thought-provoking. Okay, so remember, we have our first CFA on Friday, and it will cover... Um, all kinds of stuff that we've talked about so far this uh, this short semester. Any questions from the homework we should address? Yes, sir. Two nine thirty nine. X y squared plus ten equals zero. X, Y squared plus 10 equals 0. Okay, were there any tests in particular? Uh, X, 
axis, y-axis, or origin symmetry that was all three of them. Okay, so you want to check y-axis symmetry? Okay, so y-axis symmetry, the test was replace the x's with negative x's, right? I said the test for y-axis symmetry was replace x's with negative x's. Does that ring true to you? Is that the case? Okay, so this will be negative x, y squared plus 10 equals 0. Does this look like our original? What if I divide everything by negative 1 to get that back to being positive? Over here, I'm going to have x, y squared. Positive divided by negative is what, Jason? Negative 10. And over here, 0. Is this our original? No. So do we have y-axis symmetry? No. Okay. Do you want to check origin symmetry? Okay. Anything else? Anyone else? Cool. Let's move on. Hey there. I want to go back to talking about circles and Antonio at the end of the period. You are beckoned forth. Okay. So circles essentially break down into two types of problems in your homework. Uh, one is where you're given an equation of a circle. and you're asked to graph it. Well, in order to graph a circle, I need to know its center and its radius. Remember, we said that the circle has this equation. Where HK is the center of the circle. So where's the center of this circle, Louisa? Yes, and for this problem here? What's sitting in the H position? Two, good. And what's sitting in the K position? Careful. Who said negative one? Why negative one? I have to be plugging something in here, Louisa, that's going to turn this into that. If I just plug a 1 in here, it's going to be y minus 1. I don't see y minus 1. I see y plus 1. So I must have the opposite of this. So I think my center is located at 2, negative 1. Any questions on how we got that center? Okay. And what can we say about the radius? What's the radius going to be here? Sarah. Perfect. She knows that 4 equals r squared, and so r must be the square root of 4 or 2. Good. And so when it comes time for me to sketch this, I'm going to plot the center at 2, negative 1. 2, no, 2, negative 1. And Sarah tells me that the radius is 2, which means if I go over 2 to 4, negative 1, or left 2 to 0, negative 1, or if I go up 2 to 2, positive 1, or I go down 2 to 2, negative 3, all these points should be on my circle. And I don't get something that looks like a circle. I get a football because I was really sucky when I drew my scale. My scale isn't the same on both axes. But I don't really care about that because I've labeled all those points. Any questions about graphing the circle and what information we need for that? So on your whiteboard, will you graph this circle for me? You all set, Shayla? Okay. Ready?
You don't have whiteboard on the back of the cart, right where he is. Yeah, yeah. But please get your own. Identify the center. Plot the center. I thought you were all going to get your supplies this weekend. Five. Gonna connect some dots for me. Don't forget to label points on your graph. Nice work, Sarah. Can you put that up there so that I don't get paranoid? Thank you. Good job, Angela. Nice, Manana. Three. Two. Elizabeth doesn't want to draw a circle. Yeah, what's up? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, see. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. You mean R equals 3. Yeah, good job. Nice. 2. At least it's not a square. 1. Even if you're not done, hold up what you have so I can see how far you got. My center was at negative 2, positive 1. My radius was 3. Any questions about negative 2, positive 1? Don't be dyslexic. Okay. Here, may I borrow yours? Look. Look at this. You can put your boards down. Um, this, this gives me negative 2. Is that a 2? What is that? So then positive 1. Okay, thank you. Any questions about that? Yes. How do I find the center? Jesus, how do I find the center? Yes, the H and the K. That's all you're going to give her? Shoot, that's cold, brother. X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared equals R squared. Lindsay, remember this form? So... The plus 2 is sitting here. I expect to see a minus. What must I be plugging in here so that the result is a positive 2, negative 2? And I see that minus k. I see that minus 1, so my k value is. And so Jesus says then negative 2, positive 1. Yes, ma'am. How did I what? I'm sorry. 
How did we get the radius? Anthony? 9 is equal to r squared. And if we take the square root of both sides. I don't have to worry about the plus and minus here because radius is a distance and distance is going to be positive. So I get r equals 3. Jayla, any questions about that? Okay, great. All right, so let's try going the opposite direction. This time I'm giving you the graph. I'm giving you the graph here. I've given you the center is at 2, 2. I've given you this point here is at 2, 1. I'd like you to write the equation of this circle. Please write the equation of that circle. one number, not an ordered pair. Oh, shouldn't there be something in between those two? Mm -hmm. That's great. Keep going. Start with the equation of the circle. Find the radius later. Five. Yeah. The did you say the the center? The center is two two. Yeah. Yeah. So two two is the opposite. Mm-hmm. So with H. Uh, <laughs> yes, ma'am. Two two is the center. It's trying to be in the center of that hand-drawn circle. Okay. Three. Two. Yoink. One. Oh, yours is bigger. I see a lot of good stuff from the boards that are up. Not all the boards are up, but almost all of them are. Now, why does this one make me sad? x minus 2 squared plus y minus 2 equals 1. Claudio says I'm missing the squared here, and as a result, I get no credit. No partial credit on our tests or CFAs. So come Friday, you just lost the whole problem because you left that out. Be careful. Any questions? Okay. Let's take a look at uh, a more exciting circle question. x squared plus y squared minus 6x plus 4y plus 12 equals 0. And so I want you to graph this circle, which means you need to find the center and the radius. But I notice I can't read the center and the radius off of this because it's not in my standard circle form. So the first thing I need to do is to get it from this form into this form. Any thoughts on how we're going to do that? Couldn't hear you. What? I like the subtracting 12. Where am I going to go after that? No. Something else we did today, though, Danny.
I didn't hear. Am I going to what? I don't know. No. There's nothing to what. I got A values of one. All right. I'll, I'll start with A. Yes, Lindsay. Oh, Lindsay says there needs to be completing the square here. I need to complete the square how many times, though, Lindsay? I need to do it once for the x's and once for the y's. So I really like Claudio's suggestion that we move that 12 over first. <clears throat> but while we do that, I'm going to group the x stuff together and the y stuff together so that now I'm set up to do my completing the square. And Lindsay said b over 2 squared has to be added to both sides. That's how we complete the square. Okay, so my b value here is negative 6. So I'm going to have x squared minus 6x plus negative 6 over 2 squared. And then I'm going to have er, plus y squared plus 4y plus 4 over 2 squared. And that will equal negative 12 plus this 9 that I added to both sides plus two divided, 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4. So on the left-hand side, this becomes x squared minus 6x plus negative 3 squared plus y squared plus 4y plus 2 squared. And then here, negative 12 plus 9 plus 4 is 1. If I do my factoring here, I then end up with x minus 3 squared, y plus 2 squared equals 1. Now that I've done completing the square twice, I can figure out, oh, the center is located at 3, negative 2, and the radius is 1, and I can draw the circle from there. Any questions about that? Yeah. Remember that magic amount that you told me was B over 2, right? Well, what's my B value here? I have to do it twice. I have to do the blue one. I have to do the red one. Once for the X's, once for the Y's. Any questions about that? Yeah, Jason. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, how did you know how much to add on the radius squared side then? That's why you need to do that. Yeah, good catch. Okay. All right. Um, so, yeah, we're a little short on time. Um, we've got about three, four minutes left, and I need like ten more minutes. So, uh, so take out your graphing calculators. Let's start with that. For sure. Why not? Anyone else? Okay, share with him because we're short on time. Okay, so what I'd like to do is plot this table. And to do that, I'm going to have to use something called stat plot. But first, let's uh, get that calculator loaded with data. 
So I'm going to turn on my calculator. And my calculator is a TI-84. The TI-83 works remarkably the same. Um, note here this button here called STAT. I'm going to press that button. And it should bring up Edit Calc Tests. I just want to edit, and I hit Enter to do that. Now, mine seems to start with lists 1 and list 2. Yours may not. Um, I can certainly help you with that, and we'll probably continue this tomorrow. I don't want the stuff that's in this list now, so I'm going to up arrow onto the name of the list, hit clear, be momentarily despondent because nothing actually cleared, and then hit enter because that's what I need to do to clear the list. I'll go over to L2, I'll go up arrow, I'll hit clear, and then I'll hit enter. Any questions about clearing a list? Okay, so now I'm going to type into list one all the x values, 62, 64, 66, 68, 70, 72, 74, 76. Any questions about typing the x values in? Now I'm going to type in the y values into list two, 136.2. 140.6, and 171.4. Any questions about that? Yeah. Here. Oh, look at that really big number. Thank you for that catch, 164.2. Great. Okay. Now, to get this to plot, and we'll be able to do this in the amount of time we have left, if you look up now, press the Y equals button. I have to turn plot on. So I go up arrow and hit enter to turn this on. Okay? Any questions about turning the plot on? Not going to work if I don't turn the plot on. I have to turn the plot on. And then the last step, I'm going to do zoom, but I'm not going to do zoom standard. I don't want a negative 10 to 10 window. I want to do this one down here, number 9. It's called zoom stat. If you have a TI-83 or a regular TI-84, you may need to scroll down to the bottom or just press the number 9. See here, zoom, zoom, 9. And then it gives me the graph. We'll pick up here tomorrow. Yeah. If you borrowed a calculator, I need it back, please. Don't forget to get a whiteboard marker and a calculator. If you have problems with that, let me know. To stat edit. They're back. Yep.